Brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. Rumors have been gathering that Francis is going to overturn Humanae Vitae, the one good document from Paul VI's papacy that is defensible. Humanae Vitae reminds the faithful that the topics in the document are in fact non-negotiable, meaning not subject to change and the church won't even discuss changing her teachings on those important issues. That hasn't stopped various bishops' conferences from around the world from, in fact, trying to change her teachings on a whole host of issues or telling the laity that they can ignore it safely. And now the story has emerged again that the Vatican under Francis is looking seriously into changing the church's teaching on Humanae Vitae. To bring it more in line with what the world wants, what the world has been pressuring the church to accept. This turn of events isn't that surprising, but what makes this interesting is the timing. Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church has been crowing about yet another private face-to-face -face meeting with Francis, where his work was endorsed, and a cardinal known for his rejection of church teaching on matters of the flesh calls for the church to publicly accept the wild rejection of, frankly, reality of the flesh that the, that's going on in the culture right now, where things are determined to be fluid and changing. Citing secular organizations and NGOs as the model the church should follow on topics of gender. This is bizarre thinking. The idea that the church should embrace secular organizations as a leadership model to follow reeks of apostasy, especially on issues that are probably just a fad. These issues combine to paint a picture of change reminiscent of what Sister Lucia Fatima warned of, that the final battle between God and the devil would be over the sacrament of marriage and the family, and it is playing out right before our eyes in the church itself in our time. Headline from the Once Great Tablet. How could the Catholic Church develop its teaching on artificial barriers to prevent fault becoming fruitful and multiplying? Holy Worldwide shows that most Catholics do not accept the use of these implements as morally wrong. Note again the framing here. Most Catholics don't accept the teaching, ergo the teaching must change. This is a diabolic inversion of authority in the Church, and really only goes one way. If we tried that with the liturgy, they'd laugh us out of the room. The Catholic Church is hierarchical in nature, with its head being Jesus Christ and the Supreme Pontiff working as his vicar on earth, with the bishops working with the pontiff while submitting to his authority on most issues. The laity have little authority in the Church itself, but we see the diabolic inversion of the concept of authority all throughout the statement from Cardinal Paglia here. It's worth noting here that Cardinal Vincenzo Paglia is the president of the Pontifical Academy for Life, and he is one of the men most responsible for bringing proponents of the Moloch ritual into the organization on Francis's behalf, done because they bring a diversity of opinions on economics that line up with Francis. So I guess we could throw out the tougher stuff that they don't uh, follow. And all this has earned the Pontifical Academy a new name, Pontifical, Pontifical Academy for Moloch. From the article, quote, Paglia's work is coming under even greater scrutiny as speculation in Rome goes that Francis is preparing a major document on life teaching in an encyclical or an apostolic exhortation. There is speculation that the Pope, who repeatedly emphasizes the primacy of an informed conscience and the role of discernment in moral decision-making, could develop the position that married couples <clears throat> may not use artificial barriers to being fruitful and multiplying in any circumstances. Born in the ancient town of Boville Ernica in Lazio, central Italy, the 77-year-old Archbishop is President of the Pontifical Academy for Life and Chancellor of the John Paul II Pontifical Theological Institute for Marriage and Family Sciences. When we met, he seems unfazed by the turbulent debate that has seen the Academy come under heavy fire from sections of the Catholic media, especially in the United States, where even a hint of a wobble on the Church's ban on the use of these implements or other forms of artificial barriers provokes furious charges of apostasy. That's because it's a rejection of the faith. <laughs> anyway, Paglia has a warm, effervescent personality. He seems to approach life at 100 miles an hour. When I arrived at the Academy's offices on the Via Dea Concilzione, the broad thoroughfare that leads to St. Peter's Basilica, he had just finished one meeting. When I leave, he was being ushered away to another. Underneath the smiley exterior is the steel of someone determined to get things done quoting the Cardinal directly, look, today what is always important to us is to be really embracing of life in a manner that is effective and in no way ideological, he tells me. We're interested in demolishing, how to say, 
the ideological prejudices that contaminate reflection, contaminate public opinion, and they prevent broad engagement across the board, end quote. The resistance from this comes from trads, and guess what, here's a modus operandi, reduce your opponent's criticisms to being only ideological and then dismiss them. That's what Pogli is doing. I mean, he says that their point is to destroy the opposition. And that's right out of Francis's playbook. All reports are that Francis is going to scrap Humanae Vitae and quote-unquote update the teaching to essentially allow for the world's position on that issue to be accepted in the church. <laughs> that's where we are now as Catholics. I'd call it apostasy, but Pogli practically said it anyway, since this teaching is one of the most ancient teachings of the church, going back to the first centuries in the Didache, which was an ancient catechism that taught the faith and how the faith is to be lived in our daily lives. The church has been against this stuff since the beginning for 2,000 years. Yes, the first century. This entire issue is one of the non-negotiables in the church, yet for Francis, there are no non-negotiables. Everything is up for grabs. Anything can be changed to make the church more broadly accepted by the world. What Pogli is espousing is the seamless garment understanding of Catholic morality. It's a term coined by suspected demon worshiper Cardinal Bernadin of Chicago, and the seamless garment is meant to bring a whole host of social woes up to the same level as the Moloch ritual. Think unemployment and, um, you know, related things, thus reducing the heinous evil that we're talking about here, a heinous evil act of just one issue among others that can be ignored in social situations, where we have a duty to defend the teaching of the church, like say, with a politician who publicly calls herself Catholic, but who insists on coming up to the altar to receive the Eucharist and makes a big political show out of it to the point where her cardinal has to bar her from receiving Holy Communion. This happened at the same time, by the way, that reports began to emerge that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church had a personal meeting with Francis. Pack Papa Francis has in the past endorsed Pastor Jimmy's evil work with letters written to him that Pastor Jimmy has put on his websites and on Twitter. This time it was no different, though, with Pastor Jimmy taking to Twitter to let everyone know that, well, Francis was on his side on this issue, on his core issue. Quote, I was deeply grateful to meet with Pope Francis in the Apostolic Palace this morning for 45 minutes, during which we spoke about the joys and hopes, the griefs and anxieties of those Catholics with that affliction that James Martin has an unhealthy obsession with. It was a warm, inspiring, and encouraging meeting that I'll never forget. End quote. Martin's relatively new organization, Outreach, has the story and the symbolic significance of not only Francis giving him a huge 45-minute meeting, because he's a busy man, but also the significance of this happening, happening in the Apostolic Palace. From the Outreach article, quote, Francis received James Martin S.J. for the second time in a private audience in the Papal Library of the Vatican's Apostolic Palace this morning, November 11th. Father Martin, editor of Outreach and the editor-at-large for America Magazine, is known as one of the leading figures in the U.S. Catholic Church for his pastoral ministry and outreach to the acronym Catholics. He has been criticized and attacked for this pastoral work by some in the U.S. Church, including clergy and a few bishops. Quoting James Martin himself, This morning's audience was amazing. It lasted 45 minutes and was punctuated with a lot of laughter. It was very warm, very inspiring, and very encouraging. Father Martin said, Francis spoke in Spanish and conducted the audience with the aid of an interpreter. Early on in their conversation, however, Father Martin read in Spanish a brief summary paper of, quote, the lights and shadows of these Catholics that he had prepared in advance. He would not disclose the contents of that paper or indeed any other aspect of their conversation, except to say, quote, we had a very friendly and warm conversation. He laughed a lot. He was incredibly supportive of me, Father Martin said. He revealed that he gave the Pope a gift of an icon of Christ the, the Life Giver, a copy of the icon that hung in the Jesuit novitiate where he once studied. Francis, quote, looked in great health, he said, and when at the end of the audience, Father Martin knelt for his uh, blessing, the Pope stood up to give it, end quote. Okay, so the article notes that this is a symbolic gesture of support for Martin's position on these issues in the church. Right up there with his personal meeting with the Dutch bishops who issued a mass setting for the new mass for the blessing of uh, what we'll just call James Martin couples. That ceremony that they described, that they designed, is not sacramental in nature because they don't have the authority to do something like that by their own admission. 
but their ceremony mimics the sacrament of marriage in almost every way to the point that it provides them their own alternative to the, the sacrament. Francis meeting with Pastor Jimmy is being presented by Outreach and other similar Catholic outlets as an endorsement of Martin's work by Francis. And I think they're right. That is an endorsement. He's been endorsing it for years. Meanwhile, another radical prelate was Francis to issue a document on the various ideas of gender that are out in the broader world right now. Not a document, you know, correcting those ideas or rejecting them or instructing the faithful on how to resist them. No, that would be too Catholic. Instead, Cardinal Ike says, quote, this theory is being promoted in all kinds of organizations, and we as a church have not yet said much about it. End quote. He told that to KNA, that's the German version of the Catholic news agency. Colonel Ike wants the church to embrace this current craze in the culture that determines that all reality is fluid, that God somehow got it wrong when he made people the way they are. And the cardinal wants that enshrined in the social teaching of the church with a new encyclical. He might get his wish a new, a repudiation of a, and Humana Vitae is a perfect place for it. Now, this is going to surprise many of you when I say this, but I agree with something Massimo Fascioli said on this. From his Twitter account, quote, Humana Vitae had a problematic reception, understatement, true. Imagine now what kind of reception a document like this could have, whether it might say if published in the middle of the Ted McCarrick mess, end quote. He's not wrong. The McCarrick mess took on new life with the case of Cardinal Ricard and the revelations and admissions about his own misdeeds that came out this past week, which I covered on Saturday in brief in my video about Bishop Schneider and Cardinal Burke telling us how to resist heresy. In fact, I'd expand this warning from Massimo to the, this entire subject. Now is not the time for the church to have the marital act and distortions of the church's teaching on it on the document. Certainly that teaching cannot be changed, nor will it ever, if Francis tries to change it, he doesn't have the authority to change, to change those teachings. But now is especially not the time for it, with renewed stories about priests and bishops engaged in awful deeds emerging in the news yet again. But that has never stopped apostate Rome from trying to change the faith. In fact, they'll probably use the current bad news stories to promote their wicked agenda. So I have to ask, what do you think about these stories today? Is Humanae Vitae really on the chopping block? Is Rome signaling that the church's teaching on the morality of the flesh is about to get updated and brought closer to what the world wants? Are these cardinals and prelates really just putting out sort of like trial balloons to see how people react to these, the potential of changing these teachings? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Sharing this on social media helps a ton as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.